Hello YouTube. Uh, it's been a while since I've released a video. Uh, life has gotten in the way. Um, but uh, here I am. Um, and today we're going to have a little adventure in the... Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to hack this uh, electric pepper mill. Um, I actually have two. One's a salt mill, one's a pepper mill. I think they're the same thing. They're just, you know, I put different ingredients in them. Now, the reason why I'm going to hack these is that uh, on the inside, in the grinder, they've got a little light that lights up. Um, and, well, it's, it's a tungsten bulb. You probably couldn't hear that. It's, it's a tungsten bulb. And those drain a lot of power, they're inefficient, and uh, when it's grinding, um, well, the, the brightness doesn't really stay very constant. So. I thought that I would make the whole situation a little more power efficient by putting in an LED. Now, I did this one earlier just to make sure that I could. Um, so it's now got a uh, an LED in it. Now, if you listen to the motor, I don't know if it'll actually come across the microphone very well, but if you listen to this motor, and then you listen to this motor, You hear how this one kind of goes rear, 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 rear. I'm pretty sure that's because the uh, the the tungsten uh, light there is is drawing way too much power off of the uh, off of the circuit, and the motor isn't getting to have as much power as it would like. So we're gonna quick, quick run across. We're gonna do some math. Sorry if you dislike math, but. Uh, I just want to teach you guys real quick how to um, determine the size of a current limiting uh, resistor to put into a circuit. So uh, we're going to use one of the most commonly used equations in electronics, and that's uh, V equals I R. And that's voltage equals current times resistance. Now we're going to use that to figure out how big our current limiting resistor for our LED needs to be. Now I'm going to be using, uh, I probably way overpaid the, for this, but they have them at the local electronics store. I could probably get them by the thousands off of eBay. But it's, um, that's not the right package. That's for the blue LEDs. That's probably, I don't think it's the same. Yeah, it is. Um, so it's a 3.6 volt uh, LED that dissipates 20 milliamps. Now, 20 milliamps is the maximum that you should put into this LED any higher, and it will start uh, overheating. So to figure out uh, what that current limiting resistor needs to be, we need to know what the voltage of the circuit is going to be. So these grinders run on four AA batteries. And a AA battery runs at 1.5 volts, so four of them is going to give us six volts. So we've got a six volt circuit. And then our uh, LED dissipates 3.6 volts. So we need to subtract 3.6 volts from six volts, and we get. Uh, 2.4 volts. So that's the current, or that's the uh, the voltage that's going to be going across the resistor, the remaining voltage. So we want that resistor to only pass 20 milliamps, so that it's uh, the maximum that that uh, uh, LED will be able to to dissipate uh, before it starts running into problems. So we're going to plug these values into this uh, equation here. So we've got 2.4 volts on this side of the equation equals I, and that's going to be milliamps, so we have to go 0.02, that's 20 milliamps, times the resistance, which is our unknown value. So uh, now we do a little bit of algebra. So we're going to divide 2.4 by 
0 0.02. We're going to divide this side by 0 0.02 to remove that from the equation. And we end up with uh, 120 ohms equals our resistor. So, now I already prepared, well, started preparing this off, off camera here, my 120 ohm resistor. Now, I didn't actually have a 120 ohm resistor handy, so this is actually two 270 ohm resistors in parallel. Um, now I'll just show you how you actually calculate resistance in parallel. That's a little bit complicated. You can cheat and make it easy if you're using two resistors of the same value. Um, resistors in series add, so that makes it really easy. Um, you put them in series and they add resistance. But in parallel, things get a little weird. To con calculate parallel resistance on a resistor, it's 1 over uh, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. Now, if you're using uh, resistors of the same resistance in parallel, at least uh, you just divide by the number of resistors. So if we have a 270 ohm resistor and we've got two of them in the circuit, it's just going to divide by two and we're going to get 135 ohms, uh, which is a little higher than the resistance that our previous equation called for, which is good. If you can't meet the exact resistance, always go higher because that's going to make the current lower and the LED will last a little bit longer. So I'm just going to quickly, uh, come here soldering iron, uh, I'm just going to quickly finish uh, building this, this little parallel resistor network here. Um, and then we'll get to the disassembly of the, uh, the salt grinder. And try not to burn myself here. Uh, and then I'll show you how we're going to accomplish the changing over from the tungsten lamp. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna quickly crop these leads without shooting them across the room. There we go. Push those off the way. So there we have it. That is a 200, or er, that is a 135 ohm resistor. Um, that, uh, interesting, and I, Interestingly enough, we'll dissipate twice as much wattage as one of those uh, resistors would because uh, while you may be decreasing the ohms by putting them in parallel, you're also increasing the wattage that they can dissipate. Alrighty, so we're just going to disconnect this and we're going to start taking it apart. Uh, I need my screwdriver over here. Uh, neat little ratcheting screwdriver I've got here. Come on. No idea how that's going to sound over the, the microphone, but... Well, I'll uh, see if I can figure out how to do audio stuff in post-processing. It's really bad. But anyway, we're just going to unscrew this housing here. And take that off and we've uh, well it's got a very simple setup here got a little cover and a little tungsten lamp on two wires we're gonna have to figure out the polarity of those wires shortly because uh, tungsten lamps don't care about polarity but LEDs do so I'm just gonna grab my soldering iron again here Touch it to those beads, take the tungsten lamp off, toss it over to the side there. And then just to clean things up a little bit, I'm going to crop these leads like that. And uh, 
Actually, I probably won't. Yeah, I'll leave them at their full length just for now. We'll crop them if necessary again later. So I'm just gonna quickly crimp off some of this uh, insulation here. Now, uh, with my wire strippers, I like to use this little nut you can use to um, kind of preset the jaws so that they don't uh, close too far, and then you can uh, very quickly um, snip off a, a bit of insulation without having to uh, feel for the little bump as it finishes cutting through the uh, the insulation. Alright, and we're just going to tin these leads with a little bit of solder, just like so. Now I'm going to reach over here and grab the, the body of the soldering iron, because we, or the body of the grinder, because we need to figure out uh, the polarity of these wires here to plug the LEDs in in the correct direction. Screwdriver go over there. That's oh, trying to roll away. This will be pretty easy. We're just going to set that to volts. Um, I'm going to grab one lead with that one, one lead with that one. Alrighty. So I actually managed to grab it in the correct polarity from the very start. As you can see, the voltage read as a positive value, which meant that the lead that I had, the, the red uh, probe on, is the positive lead. If the uh, value had come up on the display as a negative value, then uh, it would have been the other lead. So just so I can easily keep track of which of these is which, I'm just going to put some... Uh, gold marker on this lead so that I know which one is which. Alrighty, so the next step we need to do is um, I'm gonna grab my, my LED that I'm going to install here and uh, I want to bend the leads a little bit. So I'm just going to quickly grab these, and I think I want the resistor on the inside, so we're going to go spin those up like that. That's a, a neat little trick you can use if you need to, to bend your leads nice and evenly. And then you'll see that slips in rather neatly there. Now the other thing we're going to need to do is this little pin, I have no idea what it's for because it doesn't actually socket into anything, but we're going to use our diagonal cutters here to just uh, nip that off and throw it away. Otherwise we won't have enough room for the resistor. Um, now, I like to put the resistor on the positive side of the circuit. You don't really need to put it on, on any particular side. It's, it's not required that it go on the positive or negative side of the circuit. Uh, it performs its duties just fine either way, but uh, we all have our preferences for the way we, we set up the circuit. So I'm just going to put a little, little solder on the leads of this uh, LED here. Um, I'm going to crop this one up. Uh, yeah, we'll do it about here. The inside of my other one isn't going to be nearly as clean as the inside of this one is going to be because I... Uh, well, the first one was the experimental one to see if I could even do it. So I'm going to take my little resistor array here. A little solder on the lead of that one as well. And then crop it off 
to a decent length here. And then using a multiple finger technique here that will hopefully not burn me, I'm going to tack this resistors to the LEDs. Ah! I have to hold still in order to do it. Come on. And there we go. So that's the resistor put in line. Now, just to help protect me from any shorting on the uh, the leads here. I'm gonna cut myself a little length of heat shrink. That is probably way too much. In fact, I know it's way too much. I'll have to crop it. Uh, and you guys can't even see what I'm doing because I forget that the camera has a limited field of view here. So that goes in like so. I'm gonna bring Hold one around and let's see. I'm gonna kind of contour this a little bit so that it. Ooh. Ah! I probably should have practiced this a little bit more on the on the other one, but you guys get to watch the unedited version here. So there's that. And let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm going to crop this down just a little bit further here. Now I'm going to slide this heat, sink, heat shrink over top of that wire. going to crop this lead short again, just like so, and then put a little bit of solder on the end of this to tin it. This is a little trick I learned from uh, Big Clive over uh, on his channel, BigClive.com. Uh, when you're doing discrete soldering, which is when you're soldering one component directly to another. If you put a little bit of solder on both sides of the joint, <clears throat> all you need to do is uh, lightly touch them together, give them a tap with the soldering iron, and then it uh, seals the joint right up. It's nice and clean. So, I'm gonna Bear with me for a moment as I work this uh, over the resistors and positive lead here. And then I'm just going to grab my heat gun here and give it a quick. This is probably an excessive bit of over-engineering with the, the whole um, heat shrink tubing there, but um, I like to, to keep both sides of the circuit isolated from each other, so I'll just... Uh, oh, and uh, now smelling very strongly pepper because I just uh, heated up the, the remnants of the pepper dust inside the, the grinder here. So my next step, I'm just going to kind of get a feel for where this lead fits. And I'm going off camera again. need somebody to, need to like set up an alarm or have somebody yell at me when I, 
when I go off camera there. So the next step is to just quickly tin the end of that. fight with the uh, wires here to try to get them to connect. Hold away too f soon. There we go. I always got to remember to let the solder solidify before you pull away the joint, otherwise it um, just falls apart because it hasn't uh, solidified yet. So there we go. Now I'm really hoping I got the polarity correct on that. It would be terribly embarrassing if I buggered that up. So we're going to quickly test. There we go. And now we have an LED illuminated uh, salt and pepper grinder set instead of the previous tungsten lamp. And the motor should have a little bit more torque available to it um, now that it's not wasting voltage into a tungsten lamp. So I'm just going to carefully fit this back together get the screws in. Come on, get in there. There we go. And going off camera again. Really gotta stop doing that. I'm sure as I make more videos I'll get used to this whole thing. So, interesting development in my life. I'm going to be going to school soon for uh, getting a uh, Red Seal uh, Construction Electrician certification, um, which isn't quite so much this kind of work. Um, ow! And I just nipped off a hunk of skin by pinching it into the case there. That's okay, they're my salt and pepper grinders, so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of my flesh inside them. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be going to school soon for my uh, construction electrician um, certification. Uh, during that whole thing, I'll bring to YouTube, you know, interesting things I learned in class, or if I've got a particularly interesting lab or bit of homework, I'll probably share it with everybody. And I'll take you all on that journey as I, uh, as I get that cert. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you liked the video, go ahead and uh, hit that like button, share it with your friends, um, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.